Welcome everyone back. Um, today we will be talking about ensemble learning. Uh, this is the third lecture of the module. This lecture was in fact planned to be the last lecture, but I decided to swap and finish the whole series with kernel methods. But today we will be focused on ensemble learning. Um, I'll be talking about mainly three basic ways to do any types of combination of models. It's basically bagging, boosting, and stacking. Um, this lecture is accompanied by uh, a list of assignments. These assignments have a deadline of uh, approximately a month, so you just have to deliver it by November. Or well, we can talk more about that during the forum. So let's start the lecture because the lecture is kind of long today. Um, so let's go. Um, just pass the slide. So this is the overview of the lecture. Uh, we'll be talking about the main idea behind ensemble and ensemble models, the three main types, the theoretical framework that underpin this methodology and some empirical evidence, and there's a lot of empirical evidence that supports combination or, or aggregation of methods. I particularly like a lot ensemble models. Uh, it tends to be probably the second or third peak when I'm doing any modeling at all. I just try something simple, and then when I want to move to something more complex, I'll go for a random forest or a gradient boosting or maybe a stacking approach. After the initial review, I'll be focused on uh, a weak learner that we'll be using frequently to explain uh, most of the ensemble techniques, but most, if not all, the techniques I'm going to show you uh, are not restricted to only decision trees, but this tends to be the uh, the weak learner or the base learner that's mostly used by these ensemble methods. Then I move to random forests, gradient boosting trees. I will drill down into some practical topics like comparing random forests and gradient boosting trees, out of bag error, feature importance, and partial dependence plots. These three tools are very relevant when you are using these methods in practice. And I will finish the um, the whole lecture with um, a stacking approach, outline some of the main methods and the theoretical justification behind it. So let's start with ensemble models. So as an ensemble, an ensemble is basically a meta model that provides a consensus prediction, which is basically the combination of the outputs of Several, mod several models. So I think the pen, so yeah, so several models. <laughs> Usually every member of the ensemble or the committee can provide different answers for the same inputs. Uh, so it's, there is some level of diversity um, and it is individually weak. And weak means or it has high variance or high bias. Um, so if you use it alone, you not tend to perform well, but if you combine many of these small members of the ensemble, it provides a good um, uh, predicted performance. So why ensemble anyway? Uh, because weak learners or the base learners tend to be easy to train, maintain, fine tune and understand. Um, one of the good things is that in most cases you avoid doing model selection and sometimes some hyperparameter optimization. Um, so you, because you're using a lot of weak learners and you're putting them together, um, you don't need to select between them. You can just use them in aggregates. So that's a, a good way to avoid model selection or model picking. Uh, and sometimes you avoid hyperparameterization because you can use different configurations of the weak learners. So let's say different regularization parameters for rigid regression instead of trying to pick one. Um, 
and you can create some nonlinearities and and strengthen their performance by building an army, and then you just average this army in a clever way. Um, so it's a it's a good technique. Provides some um, empirically it provides some good performance. But let's talk about that in the next slide. But before that, there are three main types of ensemble models. First one, I think most of you that comes from some econometrics background or some financial background have heard of stacking, maybe not the term stacking, you probably have heard as um, forecasting combination or model combination or model averaging. So what you do is you have several models that were trained based on the same data source. And what you do, you, you create a meta model, this is a bigger model, that combines the outputs of each individual model into a final one. Uh, there's another approach which is called bagging. Bagging is you start with the whole data sets, you split the data sets on a clever way, creating sub data sets or smaller versions of it or different ways of seeing the same data set. And for every split that you do in a data set, you create a model. So these models are diverse, even though you're using the same model, let's say the same decision tree with the same parameters, they are diverse because the data set is different for every model. And then you simply aggregate their outputs using, let's say, an average or the median. Final one is the boosting. So boosting is a chain style uh, um, methodology. So you start with a data set, you create the first model, and you compute the residuals between the prediction of your first model and the target you're trying to predict. And you use the residuals plus the inputs to train a second model. You do the same thing. You compute the residuals with the second model, and you use the residuals as a target for the third model. And you do this over and over and over. And what happens is, in the end, you simply sum up all these models. And you have this chain style format, feeding the subsequent model with residuals and all inputs from the previous model. OK? So these are the treatment types. There are other ones as well. But these are the ones you can find a lot in the literature, and people tend to use them very often in practice. <laughs> 